In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As often, the epistle is quite complicated, the gospel is quite simple. Uh, but St. Paul was dealing with a complicated and difficult people, the Jews of the Old Testament, who wanted to go back to the Old Testament. And this was the problem with the Galatians, who are Eastern Asia, uh, or Western Asia rather. Uh, they wanted to go back to the Jewish religion because it was, had been there for 1,500 years. It was established. It was the one true religion of God as against all the pagans surrounding. And now comes the New Testament with Christ, but the Jews don't accept Christ. And the pagans say, if the Jews don't accept Christ, well, there must be something wrong. Because the Jews, is the, the, our Lord Jesus Christ is a Jew and he came from Judaism. And he claims that, the, that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob are his ancestors. Uh, he's proud of his, his Jewish ancestry. Some people today say that Jew, Jesus is not a Jew, which is nonsense. Jesus was, of course, a Jew, very much a Jew. A very, but the, people can't understand that the Jews are so wicked today. But the, uh, the answer is that high, the higher they are, the harder they fall. Indeed, Jews were the right religion of God, the one true religion of God for 1,500 years before Christ. Or for even more, if you go back to Abraham, then it's, let's say, 2,000 years, broadly. 2,000 years since, since Abraham, uh, the, 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 the religion of Abraham and Moses has been the one true religion of God. And everything else is paganism. And so if these non-pagans uh, refuse to uh, adore Christ, to accept Christ and to worship Christ, um, why should we pagans do that? If the, if the non-pagans won't accept him, why should we pagans accept him? Surely we go by what the Jews, that the Jews don't reject, the, the Jews reject Christ. Surely we should be rejecting Christ and go back to the safe old religion of Moses. St. Paul says, you senseless Galatians, what has gone into you? There are some quite vivid expressions of St. Paul as he blasts the Galatians for having been converted having converted to Christ, accepted Christ, believed in Christ, trusted in Christ, worshipped Christ, and now they want to go back to the Old Testament. So he, he and, but he is a child of, St. Paul was a Jew as well. All the 12 apostles were Jews, all of them. Our Lady, of course, and Joseph, of course. Um, we, we Gentiles today have Jews as our indispensable ancestors in the faith to have founded the New, the New Testament with, with our Lord Jesus Christ, to have accepted and supported our Lord so that he could institute his religion amongst men and save millions and millions of souls. That's all the work of the Jews, except that the Jews, of course, didn't, didn't go with it. The mass of Jews didn't go with it. They refused our Lord. My goodness me. So there it is. Well, the, the higher they are, the harder they fall. The Jews were very high. They were lifted very high, high above paganism, from when Abraham was lifted out of the pagan city of Ur, Ur of the Chaldees. From Abraham onwards, the Jews had to, had to behave specially in order to fulfill the role given them by God of providing the Messiah with his human cradle. So here, here is St. Paul ex, ex, explaining the, the, these grand questions. Um, for instance, if, if Abraham was so privileged with the promise of the Messiah to come, why was the law needed? Uh, this, is, this is about 2,000 years before, Abraham about 2,000 years before Christ, Moses about 1,500 years before Christ. St. Paul says here, 430 years from Abraham to, uh, to Moses. So that, that it's not exactly 500 years. But to keep it simply in one's mind, the simplest way to keep it in mind is Abraham, 2,000 years, Moses, 1,500 years before Christ. So he says uh, the, to Abraham, the promise, uh, as the promise was made to uh, Adam and Eve, 
that the, they, they would be the ancestors of the one who would crush the snake, crush Satan. The promise has been made, is made all down until, until the, the, the Messiah arrive, ar arrives. The promise is repeated and it's made to Abraham and St. Paul underlies that it is Abraham and not anybody else. And, to the, and, and to the, oh, through Abraham to the seed which is Christ. Now this I say, that the testament which was confirmed by God, that's the Old, the old Testament, struck the agreement, covenant, testament, struck between God and his people, the Israelites, on Mount Sinai, or the foot of Mount Sinai. That testament, uh, which, was, which was confirmed by God, the law, the Mosaic law, which was made after 430 years, that's the time to go back to Abraham, does not annul or make the promise of no effect. The law does not replace the promise. The promise is prior to the law. Therefore, then what use is the law, says, um, says asks St. Paul. Um, for if, the, if, if, if the inheritance of Christ, the Messiah, came by the law, it wouldn't be any more coming by the promise of Abraham. That's not likely. It's not possible. So the promise of Abraham to Abraham stands, but the law is added on. Why, says St. Paul, and St. Paul's answer is, why then the law? It was said because of transgressions until the seed should come. So because of all the sins being committed by the Israelites, something was needed to keep them in order until the Messiah would finally come. And that which was given to them to keep them in order uh, was like a tutor given to a child, says St. Paul elsewhere, or following on here in Galatians. It's like the, the law is like a tutor the, the, with, a, with a rod who's going to tame the naughty boy and keep him in line until he's fit to grow up and, and, and when he's grown up to inherit the estate of which he is the heir because he's, uh, it's, it's, the estate is due to him. Why then the law? Because of transgressions until the seed should come, to whom God had made the promise, being ordained by the angels in the hand of a mediator. So the mediator is Moses. A mediator is not a one, but God is a one, and is then the law against the promises of God. So God, the promise came from God, the law came through Moses. Now, God doesn't need a mediator. So... Um, it is then the law against the promises of God? No, it's added on top of the promise or underneath the promise to support the promise and protect the promise until the time comes for the promise to be fulfilled when our Lord is, is in, it takes flesh. So the, prom, the, the law is simply a temporary, well, 1,500 years, that's, that's quite a temporary, a temporary backup of the promise but what really matters is the promise to Abraham, which was entirely gratuitous on God's part. God used a mediator, Moses, for the law, but there was no, there was no mediator for the promise. God gave it directly to Abraham. That promise can't be void or can't be made void. The law plays a subordinate role, but the Jews then, so to speak, forgot the promise, cl clutched hold of the law, they're very good lawyers, they have a sense for the law from, very probably, from their, their divine training as Israelites to uh, go by the law, to act on the law, to obey the law. But, says St. Paul, the law can't give salvation. It's only a, 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 a tutor. It's not the father granting the inheritance. Is the tutor appointed by the father to whip the boy, boys will be boys, to whip the boy and stop him from misbehaving too much and so that he would lose the inheritance, for instance. Um, if there had been a law given which could, but the law can't give life. The law can't save souls. The law, it helps to prevent people misbehaving but it cannot positively give salvation. 
the salvation is going to come by what God promised to Abraham well before the law, hundreds of years before the law. The law is simply provisional. And so if the Galatians want to go back to the Old Testament, they're going back to the backup. They're not going back to the real thing, which is the promise made to Abraham. They're going to the backup, which was the law mediated through Moses. If there had been a law given which should give life, verily, justice would have been by the law. The law could have justified. But Scripture has included everybody under sin, so that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So, again, once again, the change is from the chosen people by race. You simply had to be born a Jew in order to be part of the chosen race. The, the chosen race by faith replaced by the chosen faith, uh, I'm sorry, the chosen race by, by law by race, by simply being born a Jew, you belong to the chosen race. But the chosen race is from now on going to be by faith, which is open to Jew or Gentile, which is what the Jews could not swallow. They could not swallow that they were no longer going to be the chosen ones. Now the despised pagans, the poor despised Samaritans, the, the non-chosen race, the, the, any, of the chosen, any of the races on earth which, are, which were not chosen, like the Jews were chosen, and which, or upon all of which the Jews look down like pagans. But yet in the Gospel, when, there are, when our Lord, um, on his way to Jerusalem, um, cures ten lepers, most of whom are Jews, uh, one Samaritan came back to give thanks to God. But our Lord says, where are the other nine? It's this poor, this, this poor despised Samaritan, who all the Jews despise simply because he's a Samaritan. He is the one that, that's grati that shows the gratitude due to our divine Lord for the immense miracle of being cured of leprosy. Leprosy has been more or less, ex it, it still exists. It still exists, but it's very, very limited. It wasn't limited so limited in our Lord's day. Uh, and it, 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 it needed a miracle cure to get out of. Today we have medicines which enable people to cure leprosy without, which can stop leprosy before it gets too terrible. But if, if there wasn't, weren't these medicines today, leprosy would have the same horrible effects of eating away the flesh of a person's face and body until he finally can't live and he, he, he finally he dies. It's a horrible disease. It stands, interestingly, among the interpreters of the Old Testament and the New Testament, the experts, in the, the Catholic, the real Catholic experts, not modernists, who have got no sense of what Scripture is about, but because they were all, they're, they're wanting to change it all in, into what well, fits modern man, and modern man can only think about the, the diseases and miracles in terms of science, which is a poor affair compared with our Lord's uh, miracles. But um, the one that comes to, back to thank God for the miracle of curing le his leprosy is a Samaritan. Tremendous lesson, very simple lesson, tremendous lesson, the faith, the chosen race today, doesn't go by race. We might, we, we very, very few probably today think of that the chosenness goes by race. We're all of us, none of us are racist, are we? Um, but here, where did this, where does the basis for the refusal of racism come from? It comes from Christianity. Had there not been Christianity, there would not be, not, had there not been, for instance, this uh, gospel showing that it's no longer by race. It's no longer a question of being a Jew. It is a question of being a Catholic, but Catholic Catholicism is by faith and not by race. So the, 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 what, what our Lord's lesson is, is clear. Uh, what matters is faith. Go, he says to the Samaritan, after the Samaritan has profusely thanked him and publicly and, and strongly thanked him, 
He <coughs> says, go, um, it's your faith that has cured, that has earned you this cure, that has obtained you this cure. The New Testament is by faith. What is faith? Uh, it's, a, it's a combination of mind and will. It's mainly the mind. It's the mind that believes. It's not, but, but in the case of faith, I am believing in things which are beyond and above my natural human reason. The theorem of Pythagoras is complicated, it's difficult, but if I apply my mind to the proof and, and, and analyze it, my mind can get hold of it, and I understand, one, I understand once and for all that the square on the hypotenuse, etc., equals the square on the other two sides of a right angle triangle. Uh, it's an interesting theorem, it's complicated, but if, I, if, I, if somebody explains it to me, my reason can get hold of it, my mind can get hold of it. I don't need help from, from God any more than the normal help my mind always needs, but I don't need a special grace or, or supernatural grace in order to understand the theorem of Pythagoras. But what the, what the faith, the faith, the Catholic faith, is in much more than just a theorem about, uh, a geometrical theorem about the, uh, the squares on the three sides of a, of a right angle triangle. The faith is about eternal life. The faith is the basis of eternal life. It's the starting point of eternal life. Uh, the Arch Archbishop Lefebvre always used to quote the baptismal ceremony when the priest asks the person presenting a little baby that can't answer himself, what do you want? What are you wanting by baptism? And the answer the, the, has, that must be given is the faith or eternal life. And what will bring me eternal life? The faith. And they will, they, the Baptist will give the gift of faith. That's what the, what the person asking for baptism has to understand and has to ask for. And that is a supernatural gift. It's, it's the, the basis, the starting point of getting to heaven. Cate people catechizing little ch children can tell the difference in the, amongst the children, between those that have been baptized and those that haven't. Those that have been baptized, even little children, already have a sense of the faith and further questions about the faith, which the, the, the children that have not been baptized don't have. Baptism genuinely gives faith, hope and charity. If one could see with one's human eyes what happens when a little child is baptized, they, they, one would see uh, when I, I baptize you, John, in the name of the Father and of the Son, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, a tea of ghost, a procession of virtues, of supernatural virtues, the like are in a religious procession with a cross bear at the beginning and devout souls all behind. Virtues, a series of supernatural virtues come into the soul of the little child, like this little child that, that, that we have here. She has all of these virtues in her little soul because she's being baptized, obviously. So, um, baptism is a great affair because it involves eternal life. Eternal life is a great affair because it, it means being happy for eternity in harmony with God as opposed to being an enemy of God for eternity and necessarily <coughs> flung into hell. Flung into hell by the soul itself because when the soul, when the soul that is not in the, when the soul that is in the disgrace of God dies, it never goes at lesser, <laughs> for instance, because it's an atheist, it, re it has refused to believe in God. To the very last moment, it refuses to, believe, to accept God, to bow down to God, to worship God, to accept God, to accept our Lord in particular. When that soul comes in front of its maker, it wants to, uh, it, it, it hears the sentence of condemnation. You have refused the faith. You have refused to believe. You have refused my divine son. And all that that soul can do at that moment is fling itself as far away from God as it can get. And that's into the fires of hell, where it is a mercy for the soul to be able to be, because that way it is farthest from God.
If it had to stay, the soul in the disgrace of God, after death, had to stay in the presence of God, it would be tor a torture, which it escapes by throwing itself into hell. And even the worst pen penalties of hell are nothing to the torture of having to stay in the presence of God. And souls don't recognize this, and souls don't want to recognize this, but it's true. <coughs> it doesn't depend upon them. Souls don't come into this life on their own terms. They come into this life on the terms of God. And life is a great gift of God because if only the soul chooses rightly how it lives, it will spend eternity in the bliss of heaven, in the bliss, in the one true heaven of the one true God. If it leads this, 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 if it leads this life rightly as it should, believing in, trusting in, the, the goodness of God, and in the necessity of His Son for salvation, carrying, incarnating, carrying in Himself that promise which was made to Abraham, the fulfillment, he is himself, the fulfillment of that promise of Abraham and nobody else, nobody else is, is, is nobody, no other God or pretended God can possibly be instrument of the salvation of souls. Pray, all of us, to the Mother of God, especially the Rosary, for the, for the salvation of souls and that as many souls as possible um, die in the next few years, in the next several years, uh, acknowledging and bowing down for and worshipping the divine Son, the one truth, the one divine Son of the one true God, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.